Last week we went over the basics of how GraphQL works. This week we're going to spin up a very simple Node.js based server that will allow us to query a GraphQL endpoint and get some data back. We're going to do this using Express, a Node.js based web server which I cover a lot more extensively in 5 minute React. For the purposes of this tutorial we're not going to talk much about how Express works. We're just going to get it up and running and focus on the GraphQL stuff. We're also not going to be working with a database. Instead we're going to simulate a DB with JavaScript. It'll be fine, trust me. You'll need Node.js installed. If you don't already have it, you can find complete instructions in tutorial 31. As always, I recommend the latest long-term stable version. As of this recording, that's version 10.14.2. If you want to go bleeding edge, I won't stop you, but generally that's only necessary for people who are really pushing Node's boundaries. This tutorial, eh, won't. So, very quickly, create a new directory named, uh, I don't know, GraphQL test. And in it, place the following package.json file. I've named my directory 49 because this is the 49th JS quick hit. All right, save that as package.json. Then head for a terminal or command prompt and run the following command npm install dash dash save express graphql express dash graphql and of course I've screwed up my JSON no trailing comma here resave try again that's better I also recommend installing Nodemon globally if you don't already have it, like this. Alright, we have everything we need to build this thing. What we're going to do in this particular tutorial is extremely simple. We'll follow it up in a couple of weeks by getting more in depth. Reminder, no tutorial next week due to the holidays. For today, we're just going to make a simple GraphQL query and return something when we do it. So for starters, we need to import those modules we installed. Head back to a text editor create a file called index.js and at the top add this code as you can see we're grabbing the express module which we'll use to instantiate our server the express-graphql module which we'll use to handle our graphql endpoints and the build schema method from the graphql module which we'll use to wait for it build the schema for our graphql model Unfamiliar with schemas? No worries. Real quick, a schema describes the layout of your data, frequently including types. So you might say something like username string, age int. And when you make a GraphQL query, the system will make sure that any data passed in or out matches the expected schema. If you try to pass, say, a first name parameter, it'd be ignored, because it's not in the schema. Speaking of schemas, that's the next thing we're going to build. So nuke this, and below your imports, add this code. Here we're telling GraphQL that a user can query our endpoint and request the get welcome resolver, and the value returned should be a string. That's the only resolver we're going to build in this tutorial. So let's build it. We're going to add it to a variable called root, which will eventually contain all of our resolvers, each of which functions sort of like an endpoint in a traditional REST API. Here's the code. As you can see, the get welcome resolver returns a string, which is what our schema is expecting. Cool. Next up, we need to wire all of this together so that we can access it. That's easy to do, and as an added bonus, GraphQL comes with a handy GUI for testing queries that we can enable with a single line. Here's all the code we'll need. This should be pretty clear, especially since I commented all the code. We get express running, then set up a slash GraphQL route and pass it our schema, our root variable that contains our resolver, and tell it to turn on the GUI. We're set from a code standpoint.
save this file, head back to your terminal or command prompt, and in the same directory where all of the code is living, type nodemon npm start. The benefit of nodemon is that it'll automatically restart your node app if you make any changes. We won't be doing that in this tutorial, but we will be doing it next time, so it's good to have. Anyway, you should see the last line. Now oh, you should see a crash. This shouldn't be app.list, it should be app.listen. So now you can see nodemon at work. It restarted automatically. And you will see that last line, the console log, show up in your console. Time to head for a localhost 4000 slash GraphQL. Hey guys, uh, something broke while I was recording this, and we lost video for the entire end of the tutorial. That didn't seem like it would be very useful for you, so I'm re-recording now. Fortunately, I still had everything open and exactly the way it was, so this is what you should be seeing, the GraphQL GUI in your web browser. It gives you a bunch of comments to start. You can nuke those if you want, or just work underneath them. Either way, in the left panel, add this GraphQL query. As you can see, it even auto-completes. You can press the arrow at the top or hit Command-Enter or Control-Enter on Windows. And you get the following response. Data, get welcome, welcome to GraphQL. This is a standard format for GraphQL query responses. A data object with the name of the resolver. Remember, this is our resolver. This is the string we expect it to return. Here's the name of the resolver. And here's the string it's returning. So the data object has the name of the resolver and its return value or values. So all right, we're serving GraphQL. In the next tutorial, which, sorry to keep beating a dead horse, is not coming until Friday, January 4th, we'll build a couple more resolvers. These ones will be a bit more complex and will be able to both take arguments and return more complicated data. See you in the new year!